T.C. Byrne initially came into business in Brisbane as a draper. He'd been apprenticed to a draper in Ireland. He'd worked in two draperies in Melbourne after his emigration in the 1880s. So these were fairly usual businesses. But then in the early 20th century, they expanded more into what we would regard as a department store. T.C. Byrne began his own business with £1,200, which was not a lot. He started in Fortitude Valley, which probably wasn't a logical place to start a big business. It would have perhaps been more logical to start in Brisbane City, but there he would have had competition from Finney Isles, Allen and & Stark and other retailers. But T.C. Byrne took a risk and with his 1,200 pounds began his own business in the 1890s, which was during a significant economic depression. I think Queenslanders remember T.C. Burns as being an institution. He uh, created the hub of the shopping in the valley. His competitors opened up beside him. They all flourished. Meet you at T.C.'s was a catch cry, I think, for a lot of people. Mail order was one of T.C. Byrne's major marketing strategies. We could probably look at them as a forerunner of online shopping, but T.C. Byrne recognised that Queensland was a widely decentralised place, that there was a sparsely spread population, and the way to get the people in the far corners of Queensland shopping at his store was to have a really nice catalogue and tempt people. He travelled a lot and that was uh, partly for his health as well, but he remained very interested in the business. He was very interested in fashions. He travelled to Paris, he travelled to Tokyo several times, he travelled to London. I think the business remained relevant because TC always stayed in touch with what people wanted. One of TC Bone's successes of being a risk taker was also his ability to change and adapt. On some of his buying trips, he would go and inspect other department stores, say in France, in Paris, and he was astounded by their methods. He took it on board and came back and thought, well, will we do it here? He was such an intelligent man and so astute and so in touch with what people wanted and did his homework that I think what might seem like risk to other people, to him, was a no-brainer. TC was, you know, yeah. an original, authentic leader. He had great integrity, his, his word and his handshake were his contract, and he led beside people. He was willing to take the front, but he also, he allowed people to flourish. He, he trusted his, his management team. TC never lost touch with the shop floor. He knew his employees and he knew them by name, he knew their husbands, their wives, their children, and he was one of them. And he was greatly loved and he had a very loyal, loyal staff because of that. He called his business the um, house of the people, but he was also a man of the people. He didn't have time for snobs, despite the fact that he became incredibly successful. He never felt he was better than anyone. He was quite frugal. We also know that he was very happy with a profit. He wasn't greedy. He had a saying that you'll never go broke making a profit and you always leave something for the next man. He'd come back from Japan with reams and reams of silk at a time when uh, other people weren't doing that. He did the direct buying himself. He'd buy for sixpence a yard and he would sell for a shilling a yard. He could have sold it for a lot more, but he was happy. He'd made a profit and he made his products attainable for so many more people by doing that. TC's ethical framework was rooted in his Irish Catholic education and it um, influenced him throughout his life. His integrity was always recognised. Even his business rivals respected him and they knew he was a man of his word I think that is why T.C. Byrne was able to raise significant loans from the banks without ever having to leave anything as security. What he said he'd do, he did. 
that uh, belief in family was incredibly strong and that was one of TC's, I think, really strong attributes is his family. That knowing who your family are and staying in, in touch with your family and valuing your family. He cared about the people he worked with. He never lost um, sight of his roots. He cared about their families and he wanted them to prosper along with him. Superannuation was not common in pre-Second World War Australia or even in early post-Second World War Australia. And so the staff superannuation scheme, to which of course he contributed, was a very significant way that he was trying to provide for his staff even after they retired. The fact that TC was able to self-fund his own company and his expansion meant that he didn't need to float his company on the stock exchange to raise capital. I also think the fact that the banks were willing to lend him substantial sums of money without requiring a security demonstrates their faith in him and faith in the business. TC was able to finance his business through bank loans and it doesn't Bank loans didn't appear, or a line of credit, didn't appear to frighten him. He was willing to take on those loans and he had enormous faith in himself in being able to, to build the business. He would give every prospective employee a brown paper parcel wrapped in string and he would ask them to unwrap it. So it said that those who carefully unwrapped it and uh, wound the string around their fingers and folded the paper and put it on the side got the job. Those who pulled the string off, scrunched up the paper and put it in the bin didn't get any further. TC Byrne had a direct impact on the growth and development of um, Queensland through not only through the retailing, but through his philanthropy and his political activities. He contributed largely to the church and the church's development and through that education, which was what he believed in. TC made a huge impact on the development of the University of Queensland through his philanthropy in contributing £20,000, which was an enormous amount of money to build the Queensland Law School. TC was on the board of directors of many other companies, the Queensland Tramways, Gas Company, AMP, which he was very fond of um, for many years. TC Byrne was never a member of any particular political party. And when he was appointed as a member of the Queensland Legislative Council, he felt that it was so important to look at every issue independently and form his own judgment about any issue. And if it meant agreeing with some people one day and not them the next day, that's what he did. Let me read a statement from his memoir. I can do more work now than many years ago. I can dance all night and be fresh and fit for work next day. If I gave up my business life, there'd be nothing for me to do but to die. I have no desire to do that. I can still enjoy myself as much as when I was a young man. Now, at 87, I'm still going strong. TC Byrne developed an enormous retail empire and left a huge philanthropic legacy for the people of Queensland. TC Byrne was Queensland's first millionaire and one of Australia's first millionaires, and that's in terms of pounds, not dollars. TC Byrne left an indelible mark on the history of retailing in Australia. At its height, his business employed more than 1,000 people. In the final year of the Second World War, when Brisbane's population was only 300,000, TC Byrne increased his profit by the equivalent in today's money of $5 million and served three and a half million customers. So that means every single person who lived in Brisbane shopped at Burns many times. TC Byrne was a self-made millionaire who started with a rundown grocery store and developed it into a huge retailing empire for Brisbane and Queensland.
TC was an amazing Queenslander because he came from extreme poverty and very hard circumstances, emigrated to, to a new country with very little except his extraordinary intelligence and his education. Um, he, was, he never left uh, his, his love of people behind and he just was a man of the people. Um, and he left a legacy in architecture, in business, in philanthropy, and in the church and family. And I think that you see that all over Queensland.